I was 10 years old when I made my trip to Belchtown. My father Andy got a job there as an art curator. I was very hesitant to move at first, but once I arrived, I was enraptured in its beauty and rich history. Every day after my classes at Mary G. Beth's Catholic School, I would spend hours of my free time exploring the cramped living conditions and small alleyways connecting the quaint shops and businesses. After a while, I realized that the people here, well, they were different. They never seemed happy or sad. They were always in a strange state of neutrality. I never had too many friends back in my old town, but there were almost no children here, except that the children in the adoption center, and they were always locked up in their large striped house. I was usually on my own due to my father's long work hours. This left me to my own creativity. I'd heard rumors of a man in the town named Nathan Bartucci. They say he was a madman that bought human skin from the dermatologist at the hospital, and that was the way they stayed in business. I never believed these stories, but the evidence of him was very con convincing, to say the least. The strange thing was that nobody ever really saw him, except for the children. Rumors flew around my school of meetings and spottings of the odd man in the streets of the city. One girl even said she visited his broken down home at the end of town. At this point, my curiosity was piqued. After school that day, I went on the hunt for the threatening estate. But if I had known what I would have discovered hiding behind those walls, I would have never stepped foot near that place. It took me a couple hours after school to find his place. It was around 6 p.m. and the sun was setting. I was about to give up when I spotted the gloomy staircase at the end of the road. As I descended the staircase down to the underground portion, I could feel the air becoming cold and ominous. I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand straight up. This childish rumor had just become a reality. There were dark, twisting hallways and pointless, empty rooms. Musty, dead flowers littered the dank, dirty ground. I took a left and suddenly was in a different space. The walls were a faded pale color, and rough wooden signs were nailed everywhere, bearing a single word, Nathan. Disoriented, I stumbled forward. My feet sank into the ground as if it was marshland. The walls were sagging and my vision started to spin. One sign caught my eye right before I fell unconscious. It said, this is skin. That's the last thing I remember before waking up in my own bed. My father told me that they found me passed out right outside of Nathan's house with scratches covering my arms and legs. Since then, I have seen Nathan everywhere. When I turn corners, I spot Nathan watching me before he suddenly disappears. In a dark room out of the corner of my eye, I'll spot him. I'm 15 now. I just recently received an email on one of my old accounts that I had when I was 10. The address and subject were blank. The message simply read, Nathan. Suddenly, my inbox exploded with an uncountable amount of emails that were duplicates of the first. This is when I turned to look out of my window. My gaze met with the newest shop in town. The owner was stapling a sign up. The sign read, Nathan Varducci's Dispenser Emporium. Nathan watched me.